Hey everybody, it's Josh, the 980 Know-It-All. Coming to you today to talk about a topic that's kind of been lingering for a little bit. In fact, last week I wrote an article about it, and the topic is Robinson Cano and him being suspended for 80 games. And the impact that has, not just on the Mariners, but on Major League Baseball, and even on me as a fan of the Mariners. If you can't notice, I've got Mariner stuff, Mariner stuff, Mariner stuff. Half my shirts that are baseball related are Mariner related, whether it's King Felix or things like that. I'm a Mariner fan, die-hard Mariner fan, but at the same time, I don't want to use the term die-hard anymore because I'm kind of turned off. Now, there are still things about the Mariners that I love. I love Mitch Hanniger, love a lot of the players on the team, but Robinson Cano, when he was suspended, it kind of, kind of hit me hard as a fan. Not only because the team had a chance to make the playoffs, and they still do, they still have a chance to make the playoffs, but it hurts the team, a team that hasn't made the playoffs in 17 years. 17 years. That's pretty much my entire adult life. The Mariners have not played in the playoffs. Every other team in Major League Baseball has in that time, but not the Mariners. So to have a blow like this kind of hurts. As a fan, I still love baseball. I still cheer for the Mariners. I still love watching the highlights when I can, but I'm not as excited to, to check on things with them all the time. Now, I know a lot of you are saying, well, the Mariners have two other players who have been suspended as well, and that's true. D. Gordon, Nelson Cruz, both guys have been suspended. And you know what? I still root for them, and I'll root for Robinson Cano when he comes back, but I don't root for them the same way that I root for some of the other guys. It just isn't it the same for me. But Robinson Cano being suspended was a big impact because, in my opinion, he was a first ballot Hall of Famer. He was a guy who was going to be in the Hall of Fame as one of the best second baseman in history. He was so smooth defensively. Offensively, he could hit for power, he could hit for average, he hit the gaps. He had the talent. His swing was so smooth and still is. His defensive work is so smooth. A lot of people think that he doesn't try very hard, but the truth is that's just how smooth he is as a, as a second baseman. But he just got suspended. And I know it wasn't for a specific drug that's performance enhancing. It was for a drug that is used to cover up that. And you can say all you want about the fact that oh, a doctor prescribed and he didn't know he was on the banned list. But last week when I was writing my article for the website, I did a search and it took me two minutes and I found the entire list of banned substances for Major League Baseball. The entire list. Everything. And if it took me two minutes, you can't tell me that someone who does that for a living, who plays baseball for a living, gets paid millions of dollars, can't find that same list and take it with them. In fact, if I was going to the doctor, I'd be carrying that list with me and saying, don't give me any of these things. But Robinson Cano didn't do that. He got caught, he got suspended. And it kills me because I didn't have a lot of desire to go to Seattle this year to watch a game because it costs a lot of money. I've got a wife and two kids and to buy tickets, to do parking, usually we have to stay overnight because it's about two and a half, three hours, especially with traffic to get up there. It's a long day if I drive back, so I have to stay up there. So it's gonna cost hundreds of dollars, especially when you count on food and all that type of stuff. So going up there isn't a big thing for me, except when there's something special going on. And with Robinson Cano being suspended this season, it's not special to me. I'm not gonna go out of my way to go all the way up to Seattle to watch a game, especially when I can go down to uh, Salem or Hillsboro and watch some minor league baseball, even Eugene, which I love to do. Uh, or I can watch Summer League ball and just here in my hometown of Longview and go watch the Cowboys Black Bears. Or I can go down to Portland and watch the Portland Pickles or, or wherever. I can do a lot of different things and watch baseball. And those things I'm excited about. But I'm less excited about the Mariners this year because of Robinson Cano. And I know there's a lot of fans like me. They were excited, they were going, and now this hit us like a ton of bricks. And we just kind of stopped. Now, we're still following the team. I still check the scores, still check to see where they are in the standings. I mean, they're in the thick of things for the wild card. But at the same time, my excitement level is down. And if things like this keep happening, not just to the Mariners, but to teams across Major League Baseball, fans are going to start walking away. Now, they may walk away and go to minor league baseball or college baseball or, or summer leagues. That's where they might go because people still will love baseball. But... In time, if this keeps up, Major League Baseball is going to realize fans are going away. 
Now, I know that a lot of people say, well, the numbers are up. You know, fans have been coming out a lot lately. That's true. But a lot of those are repeat customers, season ticket holders who come all the time or, or people who go to five, six, seven games in a year. Really, those people will be there and, and they'll probably stay. Some might leave, some might come. It's the people who go to one or two games that really kind of add the numbers though. And when you start losing those people who go to one or two games and they start deciding, oh, I don't want to go anymore, that's when Major League Baseball is really going to start feeling the pain. And you know what? Maybe that'll help with lowering the contracts because they've gone a little high, which although this last year, the offseason seemed pretty good to kind of bring contracts back to where they should be. But once again, Robinson Cano, him doing this, hurt me as a fan. He didn't do it to, he wasn't attacking me, he wasn't doing anything to, to make me feel bad. But as a fan of Major League Baseball, a fan of the Mariners, I kind of feel like I, I don't care this, as much this year. Now, I hope, and I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that players, great players like Mike Trout and Jose Altuve, never get caught and suspended. I hope that they are clean as can be because if someone like that, like Mike Trout, ever got caught, if someone like Bryce Harper ever got caught and was suspended, Jose Altuve, I really think it would do damage to the game that could not be fixed. So, as good as Robinson Cano is, I'm so glad that at this point, Mike Trout, as far as we know, is completely clean. I think he is, I hope he is, but if he's not, and some, someday in the future he gets caught, I really see baseball in a very difficult situation. Because Mike Trout might be the best player, not only of this generation, but he may someday be seen as the best player in history. And so for, for baseball's sake, I hope he stays clean. Always, all the way through his career. Once again, everybody, that's my, name. That's my thoughts on Robinson Cano. Kind of getting a little bit of thoughts on on the impact it has on baseball. And I'm Josh, the Natty Know-It-All. Have a good day.